Okay, so let's see what uh, gate can do. We'll open up um, a language resource, create new gate document. Let's use a website document. So I'm going to take this PDF. This is a PDF about, that's what she said, double entendre identification. Um, here we can take a listen. Cataan is a hard natural language understanding problem. We identify a sub problem. They, that's what she said, problem, with two distinguishing characteristics. An expression that can be understood in two different ways an innocuous, straightforward way, given the context and the risk we way that indirectly alludes to a different, indecent context. Hmm, sounds like fun. Let's find out what this document contains and what it looks like. Oh, it copied. So we're going to take the file name. Straight from the web, don't need to put it on my computer. And I'm going to call this document, that's what she said. Okay. Normally you put an encoding here, just in case, but in this case, I don't know what the encoding is, I'll leave it blank. All right, it's loading. After we load that, we're going to make um, a corpus with it. OK, maybe we want to actually just add a pipeline first. So um, in Gate, you have two things. You have language resources and process resources, right? Uh, language resources contain language. Processing resources go into your pipeline and create um, a pipeline application. I want to use the Annie default pipeline. Um, this is the quickest way to get started in Gate. It's a pretty useful pipeline um, designed for English. It does a lot of fun things, which we're going to show you on this document. Okay, so as that's loading, you can see how things are entering into the processing resources. Basically, it's opening a bunch of small pipe processing resources and putting them into the application pipeline, which we can run on that document. So in there we have the document reset processing resource, which resets the document to its base um, form. We have the any English tokenizer, which will go through the document and find words boundaries. Mostly it looks for spaces, but sometimes it's smart and it looks for other things, like it allows the word don't to be considered one word, for example. Um, we have some other resources, like the gazetteer list, which will tag uh, certain things. Um, as, for example, that's a company, or it'll tag something as a, a, a country, um, which is really useful when you're working on a document, you want to know what those things are. So that's a way to bring in world knowledge um, into your pipeline. We have the sentence splitter. Once you've done your gazetteer list, you know whether periods are real periods or if they're part of some sort of abbreviation. So you run that. Then you have the part of speech tagger, which will put part of speeches on the words. So for example, if a word is a verb, it will tag it as a verb if it recognizes it. Um, nouns, adjectives, verbs, past tense, um, verbs with gerunds, other things like that. It uses the um, pen tree bank uh, tag set. Uh, after that, it does named entity recognition, which is also really important whenever you're going to do some sort of discourse analysis, because generally what people are looking for when they're working on corpus linguistics is tying together events and people and discovering knowledge based on um, those things that they find. So they, lo they look a lot for named entities. Um, so let's take a look at the Annie pipeline. Double click on Annie. Now you can see the pipeline in action. So here you have the actual order of the pipeline. The pipeline is a pipe. So literally um, each element's input um, comes from the output of the element before it. And the thing that you run through the pipe is the document. Not really the document, but basically the annotations of the document. So rather than uh, explaining it anymore, I'm just going to show you the output. First, I need a corpus. So I'm going to make a corpus like this. And that's what it did. So it created a corpus for me. All right, I'm going to go back in here. Now I can select my corpus. And I can click Run. It's going to take a few minutes, and I'll let it run.